All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Age of Quarantine. Thank you so much for tuning in and spending your Friday evening with me. This whole week has really gone by um, so quick, I can't believe it's Friday. I'm really excited about tonight's episode. Um, many of you know uh, that, uh, you know, many of us on the St. Vitus channel, we're all from Long Island, and, uh, you know, it's, it's really cool whenever we get the chance to talk to um, people that uh, have been involved in the music scene where we came from, such as Laura Stevenson and uh, 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 Mike Campbell, um, who will be joining us as well. And uh, Laura is extremely hardworking. Uh, she has been just uh, uh, unrelentless in uh, touring, playing shows, releasing records, uh, probably like for like over the past decade or so, which is wild. So... Um, really exciting uh, to see how far she has gone. I love that when you when you know I interview a lot of artists on the show um, who are people I've never met or musicians that I've been a fan of and you know I'm honored to meet. But in her case and in Mike's case, uh, you know because uh, they've been playing together for so long, it's a pleasure to watch your peers and people just uh, excel and their music is um, incredible. She has an amazing uh, voice and an ability to just come up with. Um, songs that like for me it takes you back in this nostalgic way to like different times of your life which i love about that um you know uh it's a unique skill and i can't wait to ask her about her creative process and and how she uh, uh translate that to to a band uh, uh perspective because she has some songs that are just her with an acoustic guitar as well as songs with a full band um it's gonna be cool to get into that and also i just wanted to mention that she has a live stream on uh, Brooklyn Vegan, um, well, Brooklyn Vegan is presenting her live stream tomorrow, so that's what we're here to talk about as well. And um, I am going to get her and Mike on the screen right now, so bear with me, and we will get the episode. Let's make sure that this is all working properly. Hopefully, we're all set. Hello. Hello. What's up? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear us? Yeah, actually, let me turn the volume down because I have um, an earpiece in, and so it's like really, it feels like in ears at a show or something. Uh, yeah, you're, <laughs> no, 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 no. You're peaking a little bit. You're peaking a Should little I turn bit. Him down? Should I, I'll turn you down. Okay. okay, maybe you guys could turn me down in case yeah. that's weird. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Hey, th thanks for joining me on an episode of Age of Quarantine. I feel weird playing host because we actually know each other, but this is, <laughs> we're, we're, here we are. Good um, to see you. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I, Laura, I was just telling Mike, I don't think I've seen you uh, since uh, Mike was playing with um, the Brass, which is like 11 years ago. Oh my God. Yeah. It's crazy that that was that long ago, but it was. I mean, yeah. <laughs> right, really? right. I haven't seen you since then at all. I can't believe that. Yeah, no. I, I mean, we almost saw each other because you play, we both were performing uh, around the same time, I think at South by Southwest, and I was trying to watch you play, and then it just didn't work out at the last minute. So I tried, but, you know, oh, it's okay. one day. <laughs> Um, I want to welcome your followers to uh, to the show because I just did an intro on the St. Vitus channel, but your followers are sort of uh, quickly um, tuning in. This is a uh, a show, everybody, called Age of Quarantine on the St. Vitus Bar uh, Instagram channel that we do uh, eight, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And uh, we uh, are excited because we get to talk to artists uh, almost, um, well, we're almost doing it every day. Um, and most of the time, it's someone I don't know or someone that I'm a fan of. And in this case, it's people that I know that I'm also fans of. So okay, it's a double, like, uh... <laughs> double, double whammy. <laughs> um, I, I, I like to ask everybody this to start because it's just kind of like a, a formality thing. But like, this has been a crazy past year and a half, um, especially for, uh, well, for a lot of people, but for musicians, it's it's weird for, for obvious reasons. How have you been managing to get through all of this and how did it affect your schedules between touring, recording and all that stuff? Um, well, I was planning on kind of slowing down this year anyway, because I was giving birth in March of last year. So like everything was kind of winding down to me kind of slowing down. I was, I was still going to play shows, but I was going to be close to home because I would have a newborn baby. Now she's almost a year old, which is insane. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> Oh, by the way, congratulations. I, I, <laughs> I, I think I sent Mike a text message about that. I meant to mention that on the episode. But Thank you. This is insane. her. She, if she starts crying, I have to leave. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be back very quickly. Um, every night we, when we're making dinner, 
like she wakes up like as we're about to eat our first bite of food so we always like as we're cooking we just go like wah we just like keep saying like wah to each other because <laughs> we know that the baby's just gonna fucking start crying immediately oh um, my god I, she's been she's been good so far this the first five minutes of this uh this instagram live so hopefully she she's right sorry. right right well i'm glad this is my first time with two people at the same time and and, and for for good reason uh, for obvious reasons um but uh, yeah, that's interesting because um, I guess, like you said, you were planning on taking some downtime anyway, and it worked out because you're with your family and and yeah. and, and doing uh, uh, the family thing. Um, have you? Um, let, let's let's hold on. Let's take a second because I, I want to start by talking about the live stream tomorrow, which uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Dave at Brooklyn Vegan. He he was really excited that we were doing this. Obviously, like because touring came to a halt. Um, people have been doing a lot of live streams. I mean, some people have been using the downtime to write and stuff, and maybe we could get into that in a second, but we want to tell everybody what you have planned for tomorrow, how they could tune in, how the whole thing is working. Um, it's at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you go to laurastevenson. I think the link's in your bio. Oh, the link's in my bio. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know what okay. the address is. <laughs> yeah. Um, All good. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Uh, it's going to be a whole performance of the entire album of Sit Resist, which came out 10 years ago now. We were going to do these shows in October, where it was like nine years until, like it was the nine year anniversary of the record, but now it's 10 years because it took us so fucking long to... <laughs> Yeah, we had. We weren't gonna play the shows. We, we had, had the book. shows booked and confirmed, and like everything was gonna happen, and you know, then obviously nothing was gonna happen. But yeah, so like we were, it was gonna be like Boston, New York City, Philly, DC, Chicago, and it was gonna just okay. be like full full album, full band, like the band that played on the record, which is myself and like three, four other people. Um, but obviously, we can't do that. But you know, maybe someday. But um, yeah. yeah, so it's yeah, still it was... cool to be able to do like a version of it, but. Yeah, and yeah, it was, yeah. was going to be really easy, like easy, easy routes and stuff because we had the baby. So we were like really planning on like, just it, I was looking forward to like being in a hotel room with the baby and being like, this is a hotel room. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm glad that I'm not going to be in a hotel room with my baby right now. Also, I can't, had, I can't imagine. She had European tour dates booked for July, like 2020. And so, yeah. which would have been like, which at the time before the baby was born, we're like, yeah, the baby will be five months old. Like, I'll just have my mom come and hang out and help me. And then Laura goes and right. does shows. And then like when July came and obviously the shows didn't happen, mm -hmm. but like when that, when July came, we're like, I can't imagine you leaving for 10 days overseas right now. Yeah. Like, it was just like, right. Yeah. Right. It's crazy. So, yeah. I mean, I think it'll be a lot more manageable, you know, when the baby's like a little more like independent, but right now literally she's just like a blob that can't do anything without <laughs> us. Like, helping so like it'll be I, it will be fun to someday have she like she knows where her belly is she does know where her belly is <laughs> <laughs> and she and she really likes the sesame street tiny desk session so yeah. that's cool that's um, awesome but so it will be cool like one day to have a toddler like in like a green room you know hang out so right like, it's gonna be a family like a family uh vacation but like yeah. like na national lampoons a little different but <laughs> exactly. um, yeah. so, that's interesting I mean, it's, it's cool that we we got to do it in some capacity and it was nice to it was nice to do it so intimately uh, I mean obviously at a show it would be very different and obviously there would be more people playing with me but um, yeah it was really kind of special to have it be in my living room in this like intimate thing because it is a really intimate album um, I got to play the piano which I've never done oh know. wow uh like, right because yeah. you have probably have a real piano at your house right yeah yeah, yeah okay we do. yeah and i never like play and sing the piano at the same time unless i'm in like a band with my friends and i'm playing i'm singing like backups or something but i never do like lead vocals and play piano because it's kind of hard actually <laughs> but live, the live streams are cool in the sense that like you can kind of um like be a little bit more particular i guess i mean it's like nothing's gonna replace the live show of like standing there and having that sort of experience but there's 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 a lot of cool inventive stuff that people are starting to uh incorporate i think since this has become so regular yeah. um it's almost like a, a a show and a music video you know making a music video or something at the same time because you can get artistic with it and you can do stuff that you can't do in a club you know exactly. what i mean um so that's cool is, so everybody can go to your uh the link in your bio and get info there is it a, a paid live stream or um yeah. tickets okay cool got it got it yeah. got it 
All right, so anybody can buy tickets. Um, awesome. Well, I, I, I want to take it back a little bit because I try to use this. I always, I always call it like a glorified therapy session um, because I, I'm gonna, I like to go back and talk about your history. Hey, I need uh, it. So yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, we're all from Long Island. I love that. Um, I was just talking about that in the intro because um, so many of us at St. Vitus are from Long Island, different age gaps, but like uh, same place, kind of same trajectory, still involved with music. So growing up there, can you talk to me? And I know the answers to some of these questions from knowing you guys, but everyone's watching. So, you know, I want to kind of have you guys tell people about this, but um, how did you get involved with music? Take turns and, and tell everybody and, and really indulge us on what you grew up on, how you learned how to play, whether you were taught uh, or you learned on your own, you know, formal training, just to kind of indulge everybody. We got time, so. You want me, me yeah. first? Take okay. it. Um, I mean, I started playing when I was like 14-ish, like playing guitar and just sort of like learning by playing along to like Nirvana and like Green Day records. And, you know, my dad taught me like E and A and then I taught myself everything else basically. So, um, and then really my first like real band was Ladderman, which is crazy that like, you know, a band that ended up being like a, a, a serious like full time and like a band that people still care about today was yeah. like my high school band, you know, which is like a crazy thing. So, I mean, I joined that band when I was like 15 and um, and toured for the first time at 16, which is nuts. Like, I can't imagine. Right. Uh, it's like crazy to think about going on like a full, you know, U.S. tour when you're like 16 years old. But how old were, <laughs> how old were you when you started touring with Atmop? Like 18? Uh, 19 or 19. 19. I was 19. Yeah. But 16, you know, I talk about seniors a lot, and, and, and I think we can relate to that, uh, especially because we're from the same place. When somebody is 18 years old and someone's 15, or if somebody's 21 and someone's 16 and you're in a band, yeah, there's a huge difference of, like, what you might have been exposed to and how you experienced it, totally. uh, as opposed to just age gaps as human beings that don't have that. So it's right. interesting. Yeah, yeah there's, And it goes both ways, I think, too, where, like, I was the youngest, uh-oh. I was the youngest. In the, <laughs> I was the youngest in the band at you know for the I, so by kind of a lot like by two years, I was younger than Shram and Canino by two years and Phil by three years. So as wow. a result, it was sort of like it was either like a leveling the playing field of like you know I was sort of like at the same life place as them even though I was younger, but because we were like touring together and sort of like experience going through the same experiences. But so, yeah, I was sort of like, I was always sort of the younger person in that scene anyway. Um, yeah, right. like all you got, you and Jason and Tommy and Lou, you were all like older. So I sort of like came to it and like, that was like basically my like high school um, experience. You know, I, I went to school with Shram and Phil and I actually went to school with Maddie my freshman year. I went to Catholic school and she she was at the same school I was when I was a freshman. So I did go to high school with all of them. So yeah, it's weird that like the first my like high school band was like the band that was like my first right. step into like you know real you know like taking it seriously or whatever and so um but yeah it's it's funny because like both laura and i coming from long island we actually didn't even meet each other until after all that you know because she was playing just so weird because it's just like it was only like 20 30 minutes away but like nassau county ska scene was like a much different <laughs> world than the scene that like you and i were in you know so um, yeah, yeah. It was a rich scene because like, you know, and I like to imagine that not everybody knows who we are um, and, and just sort of like point out a couple things, which like you and I know each other. I was in a band called On the Might of Princes. I've met you when you just, I met you before you joined Ladderman. I actually right. remember the day that I met you was in Phil's house. Phil is now in Iron Sheik. Maddie is now in Reviver. So mm -hmm. these are kind of all the people we're talking about. Um, and then, um, yeah, it's, it's so interesting because Back then, I guess, like, we're talking about the early 2000s. Uh, yeah. For me, I was coming out of the 90s, but you, Laura came from, from the ska scene. You were kind of coming from, like, the pop punk scene. And then um, I was, even though my band wasn't hardcore, I was actually coming from this hardcore scene that was kind of tough and crazy. Uh, but they all kind of coexisted right. in, in a similar place, especially where you were from in Huntington. Yeah. Um, a lot of punks in Huntington. And then Laura is from where? Rockville Center? Yeah, Rockville Center. So she and Jeff knew each other 
I mean, hopefully she'll be back soon from <laughs> baby stuff. But I like, mean, she, let's just tell everybody. I mean, you, you get, bear with us. I mean, when when you have a kid, that's kind of why we did this. So yeah, you know, so yeah. we can ta- we can tag team. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so she and it's it's because she was friends. You remember Kate Watkins? She oh yeah, like, I'm still I'm still friends with her. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So Laura Laura and Kate went to high school together in Rockwell Center, and so yeah. they like knew each other. And we were all hanging out with Kate, and like for some reason, I never met Laura and Jeff until I was like 22. Like it's it's weird. I don't know how, I don't know how that happened, but it's, I think it's for the best because it's like if we met each other in high school, like maybe we would never would have like gotten together and like, you know, played right. music together, got married, had a kid. Like if we met when we were like 16, like maybe that wouldn't have happened, you know? So I don't know. It's, it's really interesting. Um, but you know, it's also like, cause I want to, I, I really wanted to talk about you guys getting together and how that worked. And it's funny because I don't know if you know this, I'm in a band with a married couple. They don't have a kid. Oh, okay. Yeah. I actually, my band spotlights where it's me and a, and a couple and we, and we travel and it's just me and them. And people <laughs> ask me what that's like all the time. And I actually like it because there's something that's like, uh, it, there's no toxic masculinity taking place when you're in a band with, um, A, with uh, uh, with a woman, but also uh, with a couple. Because, you know, you and I know when you're in a band with a bunch of guys, things can get kind of like uh, bro sometimes, whether you want to or not, it can sure. get a little annoying, you know? Yeah, and I think as time goes on, like even though I think some of those scenes maybe thought they were like above it or sort of had this like, you know, even though we are like, everyone's like punk and leftist or whatever, that like definitely that that per- pervasive shit is like still going on in those scenes for sure. For sure, for yeah. sure. The cool, the cool thing, I think that we share in common um, and, you know, when Laura comes back, we'll, we'll kind of go back to, so she could answer the question I had before. I have it all in front of me with my cheat sheet. So I'm not <laughs> going to forget. Um, but uh, you, you, you come out of a scene that we can kind of refer to as the punk scene, but then you get older. I'm 40, you know, mm. you're probably right behind me. And without realizing it, if you're still involved with music today and touring and doing all this stuff or owning a venue like St. Vitus, you know, Artie and Dave are both from Long Island. You're kind of like informally training. It's like going to college, um, mm-hmm. booking shows at VFW halls or playing shows in the VFW halls, and just sort of going through all that is like indirectly sort of training you for like what you're doing today. And maybe yeah. you didn't realize it at the time. Did you know that you wanted to do music for a living or or pursue it as a profession? I did from like a very young age. It was like the only thing I really wanted to do, and then sort of just I don't know but you know I think you just like if you have that goal in mind early you just sort of like set your life up to have I don't know to 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 seek out situations of like you know like you said like you know the first show I ever played was also the first show I ever set up and like the first show I ever booked and it was like I also now like my job well not not since March 2020 but like my job is I run a venue I book I book 300 shows a year. I, you know, do the marketing, I do the ticketing, I do everything. So it's like from playing in bands and just like DIY booking shows, because it's like, I have a band, I want to play a show. I'll book one, you know? And like, yeah. so just from that, like, like you said, like that experience of just like learning as you do it early at like a young age. And then sort of as, as you get older or, you know, just like the situation changes or your circumstances change, just sort of changing with those things and evolving rather than just sort of like staying in like one, one gear and never evolving, but sort of just still, if you still find it important to do those things, like setting your life up in such a way that like, you know, you can, you can keep doing them. And you're right. It's like, you know, both Laura and I are in our, you know, mid, mid thirties at this point And both are, have like fully are fully like employed professionally in music in some capacity, like, yeah. you know, and you always end up having to wear multiple hats when you do it because you exactly like you, like you know like it's like you got to do like three or four different things oh she's back uh, oh good 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 that's that's cool um so yeah i'm gonna actually tag out <laughs> yes let's get, Laura, let's get Laura. yeah yeah Sorry. So, Laura. so she's kind of uh no please <laughs> nothing is more important than your child or, and your you. family um <laughs> I, 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 I wish i could just do this and not have a child screaming but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the grass is always greener um i have i have a cheat sheet in front of me so i'm so that i don't um forget what i asked uh before you left so okay. we can go back to it so um you know 
I was just talking about, uh, uh, um, you know, being from our scene and, and getting started. Like, how, how did you tell me, like, how you got started learning how to sing, play, play guitar, like all, all of it. Who were you listening to? How'd you get into it? Just elaborate and indulge us on all of okay. that. Um, well, I started going to, I mean, I was listening to music, uh, like Nirvana and stuff. I don't know if that's what Mike also said, but <laughs> um, I mean, we all did. I'm, yeah. I'm the same way. <laughs> <laughs> like Nirvana and Green Day, um, you know, when I was in elementary school and those were like the first things that I like started getting into on my own, um, and, like going, mm-hmm. walking to the store and like buying tapes. Uh, those were like the first things. And then I got really into like Alanis Morissette and Jewel nice. and songwriters <laughs> and, um, those were like the things I was branching out from like what my dad was giving me, which was like Beatles and Neil Young and, you know, stuff like that. So I kind of, um, those were the things I like glommed onto was like distorted guitars and also singer songwriters. So I think that that's like eventually what I ended up doing. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And then in middle school, me and my friend Katie, I think we were in eighth grade. Um, Katie so, Watkins. Yeah. Katie Watkins. Yep. <laughs> shout, yeah. shout out. Shout out. <laughs> Yeah. Shout out to Katie Watkins. Yeah, I love uh, Katie. Yeah. She like paved the way. Uh, she like found out about shows. And so we started going to like ska shows together. Yeah. And then there were like other kids from our high school that were also going to those ska shows. And we were like, oh, these are our friends. Um, and so we became friends with them. And then we just had like a group of kids that like really liked going to ska shows every <laughs> Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and that was just my whole world, like all throughout high school until like senior year when I started smoking a lot of pot. <laughs> and then I didn't go to, cause I didn't want to go to show, like if all my friends were straight edge, so I, I never wanted to go to a show fucked up. You know what I mean? That's a um, good thing. That's a good thing. Cause I thought it was like disrespectful. Cause I don't know. It just like seemed weird. Cause that was like the, the space where we were all like, you know, just going and seeing music and we weren't like drinking. Wasn't just, just wasn't a part of it. And um, I got really into drinking and smoking weed senior year. So I stopped really going to shows as often as, <laughs> as I should have. Um, so I kind of like fell out. And then Katie started hanging out like at Phil's house and going like senior year, like going and watching Ladderman and stuff. And so like she kind of like branched that way. And I kind of just like hung out with my friends, Kim and Jackie. And, interesting. Uh, interesting. Weed and drank. <laughs> I, I, I actually, actually, I can relate to that. And I feel like that's a, that's a cool thing I didn't know about you because like something um about what was going on in long island was so amazing and cool and changed my life forever as i'm sure it did for you but like as an artist um you know you're you're a songwriter i'm a drummer i'm not i I mean i write songs but anyway this is about you like going outside i guess it's relative going outside of that and being into other styles and exploring the world i mean just going to the city and leaving long island at 45 minutes away and discovering like a whole world of opportunity where you could play with different types of people and learn things. It's, it's just as valuable, but there is something you take from that scene that I think stays with you. Um, Were you formally trained at all or did you teach yourself how to do everything? I took piano lessons as a kid. So yeah. And then like, I was in like chorus and a bunch of different like singing groups in high school. That was kind of like my niche in high school was like, I was in like uh, acapella groups and, just uh, all the singing groups that I could be in. I think I was in five different ones. So I was like kind of a chorus nerd, Um, but I never took voice lessons, but like you get enough training from like all the exercises that you do at the beginning of class, you know, if you're in chorus. So like I've brought that with me. And I think that that taught me how to sing for sure. Um, Or like at least helped. Um, So yeah, formally trained in piano, but then I kind of like fell off, you know, in high school. I just didn't want to go to, like practice the piano and like I didn't want to do my recitals and like all no for stuff. sure yeah. I mean it's like tra- you get training wheels and it's kind of like cool to kind of be like all right well like the, the piano there's nothing more fundamental that relates to every other instrument and then you're just like cool I think I got this and I'm going to create my own thing you yeah. know and I guess that's kind of what you did yeah absolutely um, yeah I, I started playing guitar like my dad got me a guitar when I was like 16 um but I didn't really start playing it until I was like 19 or 18 or 19. Um, and then I just got really into it. Just, I learned chords from the internet, you know, right, and right. just like figured it out, you know, wrote three chord songs for a while and then four chord songs for a while. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I, I, I um, apologize if this is not something you want to spend too much time about. I'm sure it comes up a lot, but your grandfather is a famous 
musician who um, did he have uh, uh, any? So so he your, your your grandfather Harry Simeone wrote the Little Drummer Boy and do uh, do you hear what I hear? Um, did he have anything to do with with anything uh, in terms of influence or, or or helping you out with learning about music in any way? Um, not. I mean, like I think like in our home we we were so surrounded by music. Did you bring the child? The child is going to be on TV. Oh, secret surprise! Oh, wow, Sorry. there she is. All right, everybody. Whoa! Uh, hey, how bad her little cheeks are. <laughs> You're adorable. Oh, thanks so much. You're the first Hi. child to You're ever be TV. on the show. You're on TV, kid. Yes. Hi, hey. Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi. I, I, She's I, just awake, I guess. This is like... If, if, <laughs> I figured this was the only way we would get yeah. through it, honestly. <laughs> what's you your bald spot? Yeah. <laughs> what's, bald spot on the back of her head. What's her name? What's her name? Her name is Joe. Joe? If you have anything you want to contribute, this is a group <laughs> effort here, so we can do this. Um, it's like I can cry. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, this is going to be on the internet forever, so you can watch this one day. Oh, um, <laughs> um, I love it. We're talking about family, so how fitting. Um, we're, yeah. we're talking about my grandpa. So, oh, good. Nice. So, yeah, your great-grandpa, Harry, um, he... He, like, I guess he influenced me playing piano, like my mom kind of pushing me towards piano, even though I gravitated towards it. She really like, uh, she really kind of, you know, threw me into lessons and, and really, because she was thrown into piano. Her mother was a piano teacher and her father played piano like six hours of Bach a day. So piano was just like important in my family and that for sure. But also just like the music that we would listen to in the house was very influenced by him and like, um, you know, big band and standards and stuff. Oh, right, right. I might right. just have to have my boob in her mouth. You can't see it, right? We can't see anything except for the top of your head. So <laughs> we're good. Enjoy, baby. Um, wow. So, so, um, like, I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit because I, I was telling Mike this earlier. Like, the time passes quick. We're about half an hour in already. Oh. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip like just kind of like you, you guys came up in the punk scene, played in bands, and then Laura, when did you? say to yourself okay i want to i want to go on a solo endeavor because you were kind of touching on that uh, anyway where you kind of like split off and did your own thing so yeah, maybe well, we could talk about that um everyone in bond the music industry which was a band that i played in with my friend jeff rosenstock um of asob fame yes yeah um he he was like super supportive of me uh playing my own shit in front of people and so like members of AS, uh, of Bond the Music, I guess they were members of the ASB too, um, would back me and I would like open for them and they would be my backing band. And that was kind of like my first foray into like playing with a band. But otherwise mm -hmm. I was like kind of going off on my own and doing singer songwritery things like open mics and stuff, which is like so terrifying to even think about doing that now. Like open mics are fucking scary. And anybody that could do that, I give them props because what do you do what are you doing that in long island or in the city because i know in, oh. in the city there was right rock um did you do like rockwood is that the name of that place um i would go to pete's candy store that was like oh, yeah. oh you mean on long island long island i would do uh the nutty irishman oh yeah no yeah yeah i'm not <laughs> well you did I remember like sidewalk that place. cafe and stuff sidewalk too, cafe like. in brooklyn um Maybe. Yeah, Sidewalk Cafe was on Avenue A, but Pete's Candy Store. Was oh, where's what's the one I'm thinking of? In oh yeah, no, you're right. Side, Sidewalk Cafe yeah. was in is is in the East Village, and then yes. Pete's Candy Store is in Greenpoint. You yeah. mentioned two places. I lived around the corner from both of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so then, like, what's interesting? So let's talk about your creative yeah. process because when you when you when you decide to kind of go solo, um, and you also now you know, you've had a band forever. Um, I want to know about like those two creative processes. Like, do you have um, kind of like a formulaic thing at this point, or do you try to kind of um, reinvent? You know what I'm saying? I just want to know like how you write your songs is basically what I'm trying to get at. Well, I I know I know which songs are gonna go are are gonna be just me, and which songs are gonna be full band just from the way that I'm playing guitar while I'm writing them. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, I can like rhythmically know that there's drums, and so I know I know where all the emphasis is going to be um, for the full band songs. And it's just like something that just clicks, you know, while it's being written. Um, right. So I never really have to like reinterpret a song with the band. You know, I don't really go like, this is an acoustic song, but let's just, you know, figure out, you know, a, a 
a full band electric version. You know, like they're just right, very right. much, they're just very much differentiated. They're in their own categories. Um, but I'm getting much better at writing for drums um, because I used to kind of just have like a nebulous idea when I first started. I was like, okay, this is going to be a full band song, but I didn't really think about the like, like all of where, where the drum parts go. But now right. I like, I know exactly how it's going to be. It's just so much easier. Also, I'm writing for Sammy Ness, who's like the best drummer. Ever. Oh, the second best drummer ever. Oh, stop <laughs> um, it. <laughs> we were actually watching you the other day. Yeah, we watched the video from the, the Vitus. Um, was such a good fucking The, 20, oh, the, crazy. the 2012 Odd Mob St. Vitus show we were watching. Oh, thank the other you. Day. Thank and you. I was just like, was so good. I was like, Chris is just a perfect drummer. Just your, your economy of energy put into playing. Like, it's just, you're not, you're not wasting any like muscle at all. You're using it's yeah. all like in you make service it look of. So easy. Yeah. Thanks. Not my the, back, my back is paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> all this back pain uh, late years later, but um, <laughs> yeah, um, that's cool. And I think that like being a thank you by the way. I think being a singer songwriter too, like also when you're thinking about drums or instrumentation, like knowing where you're going to place your vocals and and all that can kind of impact where you think certain things should happen. So yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, and the people that are in your band, obviously, Mike, um, you have a history with them. So you kind of know, you have a chemistry with them for, for, for a very long time anyway, right? Would that be fair <laughs> to say? Um, okay, let's talk about this. Because so, so you got signed for the, the, I don't know if this was your first record deal, but Asian Man Records, which is legendary, that mm -hmm. happened. I, I don't know if I'm getting the years right. Was that in 2010 or am I yeah. off? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was for okay. a record that I put, I put it out in 2008, but then Mike Park was like, I'm going to release this physically because um, I just put it out digitally. Because that was the era where you were like, if you'd go on tour and you didn't have like a record out, you'd make like a CDR demo and just sell it, sell it for five bucks on tour or whatever. And so we had like an eight song version of that record on, on the first tour we did. And then Mike Park wanted to do vinyl for it. And he... He was like, if you can make this 10 songs, so we recorded like two additional songs. Um, and so, yeah, so Mike put out like a 10 song version to make it like a full, like a technical full length. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And that was through, it was kind of like connected to you being in Bomb the Music Industry that like sort of obviously yeah. must have helped a lot. It was yeah. getting I your, mean, that's how yeah. I met him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was through Jeff. And I didn't realize that like if you do a record on a record label, like you do like, the rest of your records on that label unless you have a conversation so like oh. i put out so i didn't realize that like i was like on oh, asian man i thought it was just like mike put my record out and i was like cool my friend um but then <laughs> but then joe asked me to put records out on don giovanni and i was like sure why not you're my friend too and then mike was like wait <laughs> and I was right like, right oh shit i didn't realize because before that we'd always we'd done like seven inches or just like eps with just like random friend yeah. labels it wasn't like it didn't feel like we were like on asian man necessarily it was just like mike wanted to put this record out so yeah it was like we put seven inches out on like three yeah. other labels so it just felt like don giovanni really was like really really interested in the next record and so laura was just like cool and i was it. like friends with right. joe from don giovanni and you know and so i just like i didn't really think about I didn't. I didn't know that was a thing. Like being on. Right. It's board. weird because like we 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 came up like like you said like kind of informally doing stuff. Like it sounds like it was no different. Like a handshake kind exactly. of. Exactly. Like, yeah. Right. 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 Yeah, that's interesting. Um, you know, I not not to like sort of like I guess in in my in my situation, which was very strange. Like we signed this like twenty eight page contract when I was nineteen, and I didn't know what the hell um, yeah. any of that yeah. stuff was. Yeah. Um, and. <laughs> I've been getting like two dollars every quarter ever since then. But um, <laughs> um, so so then yeah, it seems like I brought up your old band also because, uh, and I'm sure you being a Latterman helped because people still uh, love Latterman today. It seemed like you 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 kind of like came out swinging in in a way where like you kind of had fans pretty quickly. Um, would I be fair in saying that like kind of like when you started out with your first record, you kind of already had a crowd without you know having to kind of struggle like some people may have where you're just like oh, yeah. trying to figure out who to play for and where you kind of fit in totally i mean being being involved in the scenes that we were involved in yeah it just like automatically also like jeff was very like uh there was just like a scene of bands that like bomb the music industry was a part of like 
Sidekicks yeah. and AJJ and like all these bands all over the country. They were in this like little niche DIY, you know, fest bands basically. Absolutely, absolutely. And so like that was just like the scene and and all the kids were just so enthusiastic and, and welcoming to bands that were in that circle, even if they didn't sound like, you know, even if they weren't specifically like a, a genre that they initially liked, like it, it wasn't all just straight up punk. Um, so yeah, it was definitely, I definitely just had an instant fan base with Jeff putting my record out on quote unquote, which is his like online donation based label. Um, in my yeah, park. And, in my yeah. park. And so yeah, yeah, it was, it was really, I had like a family already and it was really nice. That's great. That's a great way to, to end up doing what you're doing. It doesn't really work that way for so many other people. And I'm you forget sure, that yeah. um, you're dealing with strangers, like kind of like almost like trying to get a job interview yeah. where you're like, you know, and I, and, and, and you know, Mike and I, uh, I think in the industry, like you as a publicist and me at uh, Revolver and Brooklyn Vegan and all the random media outlets, I, I mean, I see people do that and I understand what they're doing, and, but I'm all, but then it makes me realize how lucky I am, and I'm sure you guys feel the same way, that you don't have to kind of like pitch yourself to strangers yeah. and almost like have to sell yourself that way. Yeah, yeah that and way. And figure out where you fit, like where you, who would like yeah. you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's weird. That's right. yeah, like coming from punk, you know, DIY ish or whatever, like a community. You don't even need to put like a, a qualifier genre wise on it. Like if if you're if the thing and it's funny because that community was sort of like a buzzword, like where, you know, like back back in our, you know, Latterman <laughs> right. days. But it's like literally like that's what it if that's what it is and that's the approach you have with making music and the people you choose to make music with or tour with or put records out with or whatever, it's like a, I mean, it's just a more rewarding experience. It feels, it's it's a better experience. It, like, you know, like, yeah, aside from yeah. even like the biz side of it, where it's like, it's easier to have people come to your music because you already have sort of like a crew of folks that already are interested in what you're going to do next. It's also just like a rewarding aspect of life to have like a group of people that it's, it's you're sharing something with, or you can play on each other's records. All you got to do is, you know, like totally. a, te a text message away from getting your buddy that you know would be like, <laughs> the perfect cello player like on this song like it's just you have a buddy you don't have to like pay some session for right, right, right. <laughs> like, it's like no like yeah. i'll sing on his record and she'll sing on my record you know like just it's it's great to have like a community of people to have have grown up with and just like continue to evolve in in music with it's it's definitely just like it makes life in music more fun when so much of it is just like hard and a slog and annoying and you get burnt out like <laughs> Yeah, so, but like yeah, I, 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 I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know it's been a tough year. I feel you. I'm with you. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, and then you know, so cause you you I asked about your creative process because you put out records like every like you put out records like so many records over and over again. Uh, you know, some some artists take two three years at a time. Um, do you feel like? Do you feel like in your creative process uh, that, and I, by the way, I love that you have a commentary. There are some bands that do that, but you have like commentary uh, stuff out there where you like talk about all your songs and all that. So oh, yeah. <laughs> some of this might be redundant uh, for, but for people that don't know, um, you know, how, do you feel the pressure to kind of like try to, try to, tr to, to reinvent yourself on the next thing and the next thing, you know, or do you kind of, uh, just write what you feel and it is what it is. And if people like it, then that's cool. You know what I mean? Like, how do you kind of handle that continu continuity as you kind of pump out more records? I'm definitely just kind of writing what I want to write. Um, I never really think about the way that it's going to be received until until right before the record's about to come out. And I'm like, Ugh, are people going to like this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, um, okay. But yeah, I'm definitely just, um, I'm always listening to new things and getting inspired by just different shit. So I think that that, that finds its way into my writing um, where like, I'll be like in a power pop, you know, phase and, you know, and then I'll just be listening to a lot of like Leonard Cohen and like, just, you know, it, it really, it, that really colors my writing more so than like thinking about what the people want. Cause like, I don't know who the fuck's going to listen to my record. So maybe right, I'll just right. <laughs> write what right, I yeah. want to write, you know? that's that's a good point you know and it's it is funny when you realize that people do do that and i like i, I i've learned so much over the past year alone because 
this is like episode 200 something at this point. Um, wow. Yeah, you started I started like March. I, this is really funny, actually. I, I remember the date because the pan, I remember when the pandemic became like a very like real thing. It was like on the news. It was like, you know, the weekend of like March 15th or some shit. It was like that weekend. Yeah. Most people were probably thinking about, you know, um, everyone's probably thinking about different things, right? That they're panicked about as it pertains to their life. I was like, first thing, of course, my family, my friends, you know, that kind of stuff. But on the forefront, I was like, shit, I'm used to like being at shows and touring and talking to people. That's my life. Yeah. I do that every day. Um, so I started the show um, to like replace that because I'm like, I'll talk to musicians right. every yeah. night. Um, I had to scale it back, but we did this five days a week uh, up until recently wow. um, at eight o'clock. But I, 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 I started out alone and then and then I started asking other people to host. And now there are four of us. There used to be, it went from like one person to three people to four of us. And even with that, I'm just like, you know, we can't do this every day. This is insane. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but it's cool. And I guess my point was, is like, I, I, I'm, I learn a lot about different people. <laughs> um, don't worry about it. We, we, we know this is part of the situation. It's cool. <laughs> It's a, we're, 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 we're used to shows at St. Vitus where people are screaming all day long. So, exactly. um, yeah, it makes us feel like we're at St. Vitus. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's just, it's just interesting. It wasn't really a question. It was just more of a statement. Like, everyone has a different sort of, like, um, um, way that they feel that they need to go about doing the same yeah. thing that you do and the thing that I do. Um, I love that you did a live record, by the way, only because I grew up – I'm old, so I grew up on live records – so my, some of my favorite records by bands are totally. the live records. Totally. Yeah, I heard um, they suck live. <laughs> well, there's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a good Descendants uh, live record. And um, uh, my, like Bad Brains Live was one of my first records. But um, why, what made you want to do a live record? Was it because you wanted to bring back that format and you grew up on that? Or was it more fueled by, I know it's like um, Planned Parenthood charity, you know, involved. You want to talk about that a little bit? Um, it was definitely like, that, that was definitely the reason why I was compelled to do it. Cause I was like, Oh, this is, this is a really special recording. Um, and we had a reason, you know, why we wanted to raise money. Um, but definitely I didn't even think about that, but for sure by growing up with live records. Yeah. When we, when, I mean, I feel like you could probably relate to or like when you grow up, you sort of have like a, a budget on how much you could spend on getting new music. Like you couldn't just listen to everything at once. So like, I feel like the live records, it was like, it acted as like a greatest hits almost too, where you're like, like, oh, I, there's like nine no effects records, but this one has like all the best songs on it. So get the live record. So it's it's a cool, (laughs) it's a cool capture of of like a summary of a band. And it was also like a document of that tour. Like it was like a really cool venue in in the Netherlands that like opera, like you've toured Europe where it's like, you know, you end up in these spaces where it's like, wow, the government, like, completely funds yeah, this Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, like, you know, like, Nirvana played there on the Bleach tour. And, like, actually, Kurt, Kurt Cobain <laughs> proposed to Courtney Love on the phone of the production office of the venue. Which venue like, was it? It was um, Vera in Groningen, Netherlands. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. so they so had it's all related these... to Vera Project in Seattle. Yeah, Vera Project in Seattle right. is based off and of this And also place. Holland Project in Reno. And it was like, it's oh, amazing. Wow. Like playing the show is such an amazing night. We're like hanging out with everyone running the venue that have worked there for like 40 years and like telling us all these stories of like all these amazing shows yeah. that had happened there. You two played there. Yeah, you two played there on their first awesome. tour. Like it's insane. And so it was like, a, and they record all their shows, like all board, board recorded and audience mic. So it was like a really good sounding recording. And so we were just sitting on it. And then I think it was literally the day after trump was elected you're oh, like wow. you're like why don't we release this recording as as like a planned parenthood benefit and we're like yeah let's do it that's a reason to do that's it that's awesome yeah. that's awesome yeah that's, that that's i love that because like that that should inspire people to do stuff like that that's why punk started man like, yeah because yeah. of fucking ronald reagan you know what i mean yeah. um yeah, we, it's weird um but um yeah, the the, 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 the the live record, I feel, is, like, interesting also because of what we're talking about. Like, it's not only the greatest hits, but somebody that we um, bo- we are all fans of and that you're friends with is um, Tim Kasher, right? Because you guys oh, have yeah. played shows yeah. with Tim. 
if I was going to uh, talk about somebody that should put out a live record, like, you know, he, his band, Cursive, like, they, they actually change their songs completely live. So, right. you know, some bands that do that, um, it's pretty cool. Who are some of the, like, I love talking about the holy shit moments because I've had a few myself where, like, I can't believe I'm touring with this person or collaborating with this person or that I'm even in this venue. Like, what are some, like, holy shit moments for you where you're just like, this is nuts. I can't believe that I'm doing this right now. Hmm. Definitely the first thing I can think of is, like, Riot Fest, like, being in the backstage oh, yeah, area at Riot Fest. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, oh, there's Robert Smith. Like, oh, <laughs> oh my God. God. Like, and then, like, doing a shot of vodka with Pussy Riot and, and them being like, we don't drink, we don't drink with ice in Russia. And it was just being like. And, like, Macaulay Culkin <laughs> was sitting nearby. And you, like, talked to the Jizza for, like, 10 <laughs> oh, minutes. Yeah. It was just like. Was oh, so my great. God. It felt like a, dr- like a fever dream. Like, how are all yeah. these people within the same space? Wayne Coyne was just, like, putting on his album. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. So that, for me, definitely that is one that I'll, like, never forget because of just how, like, completely surreal it was. Yeah. Um, I mean that's pretty nuts. Yeah, that was that, that was was that all at the same time? That was like one particular time. It was all the same day, like all right. within like you know like lunch at Riot Fest on on day two or whatever. Like it's just like wow. insane. <laughs> like Macaulay that's Culkin, amazing. Macaulay Culkin and yeah, and like Pussy Riot sitting like at the same like a table. Pizza based band. Yeah, they had a band that was like covering Velvet Underground. Oh yeah, they were called the that? Pizza Underground. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They like they loved like, playing at Babies All Right all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I don't know. What about you? Got any other ones? You can I'm trying. Of? I'm like drawing a blank. Who have we even played with? A lot of people. I guess it's always an oh my god moment when I'm, I mean like you're mentioning Tim Casher. We did a tour with Tim, and his yeah, yeah. band on that tour was like so fucking ridiculous it was patrick who plays in cursive this drummer named dylan um who's amazing jazz drummer drummer from la and then oh, wow. um, sarah from see through dresses who are another omaha band uh on bass and they were like insane they were so good and just like chaotic like some nights it would just like get wild uh, because the, the the crowd there like the crowd buys tim a lot of shots um <laughs> yeah 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 i'm sure he's like uh okay like you know like it's, <laughs> it must suck but like so it was just like this energy that was just like so wild and they're all just such good musicians and he can just like he dives into each song and he's such a compelling performer yeah. um that yeah every night was just like fuck <laughs> that was when I was trying to come see you, I think, actually, uh, if I'm not mistaken, right? When I called you, I think. We yeah, played, Mike, I, we played Austin, wrong? but I don't think it was during South by Southwest. We played Fest with them. Yeah, I don't think it was during South by Southwest, actually. I oh, think okay. we just, I think we were just in the same, I think we were all, we were on tour in the same city. Oh. And, and, and and maybe you were playing with him. But yeah, we, just played rings Red, a bell. we played Red 7 in Austin, if that's what. Yeah. Oh, yes. And I yeah, grew up yeah. that night. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow yeah that makes sense that because i i was in austin okay. when, when we were talking okay. on the phone yeah okay. that's funny I, I i i'm gonna um pivot to kind of bring it back to the um to the to the live stream in a second and talk about the album that you're celebrating but one quick one that i can do after your story that made me think about something i wanted to share is i on the matter print has played with the misfits once and 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 um and it was with Marky Ramon on drums and Des from Black Flag on guitar. What? And um, I was backstage and wanted to um, uh, tell Marky Ramon that it was an honor to share a stage with him. And he didn't even look at me. He took a <laughs> he took a he took a sharpie out of his uh, of his uh, jacket his leather jacket and grabbed a bar napkin and autographed it and threw it at me and walked away. <laughs> <laughs> Never forget that. I had to bring that up when you just because, like, I know what you mean. It's like fucking weird when you're like in a situation like that, yeah. And you're just like, what is even happening right now? Yeah. That is so fucking funny. Well, dude, that's yeah. speaking of the Misfits. Like, I oh, we never ended up running into each other, but you and I were both backstage for that Misfits rancid MSG show. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. crazy. Yeah, I was so crazy. I'm just like, oh look, there's Slayer walking around. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I was like driving, yeah. I was driving Rancid around all day, like back and forth from like the hotel to like the airport hotel. Cause they just, they flew out like at, right after the show. Were you seeing our van? Or was it like a no, it was, it was like a rental van, like live, cool. live Nation rented a van for it. But like, right. yeah, so I was like trying to meet up with you, but I was running around like crazy all day. But I was like, 
I was like hanging out with Tim Armstrong all day. It was insane. <laughs> we could we could talk about this offline, so we're not fucking just like going off. But like, I actually met Lars through my job and have his phone number, and I was texting him while I was there. Um, and we're not friends or anything, yeah. but like, I like I, I I did a contest and gave away one of his guitars, and he, he was very punk about it. And he was like, "Oh yeah, let's just talk on the phone about it." And actually, like, called me on his personal cell phone, and I'm like, cool. "Well, I'm not I'm not used to like that happening." Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That's so funny. Um, okay, so let's talk about tomorrow night because you are doing this to celebrate shit resist. Do you want to like uh, in the last 10 minutes just kind of like maybe talk a little bit about the significance of that record for you, for your fans, and um, and then uh, just kind of uh, any last minute sort of announcements or things and just uh, remind everybody that, that this is happening, you know? Um, well, that record was very important to me. Um... I think I think a lot of people are, are that like me. That's like their favorite one, um, either that one or the one after it. Uh, and I don't know. It just is like a little time capsule, especially since we put out this deluxe <clears throat> reissue where we we like we're looking through old photos and finding old recordings and stuff and like listening to demos and shit because we put out like a we had it remastered, but then we put out a, a record of like a, a bunch of different like versions of each song, some live, some whatever. It was just like. It was a really special, hold on, I gotta get this remote control that the baby's playing with. Um, it was a really <laughs> special, just moment in my life. We were living in Brooklyn. Life was just like within like a two block radius. My band was all living there and I was working at a movie theater, you know, like a 20 minute walk from there. And like, I don't know, it was just, it was just really special. And music was just like fueling everything. And we were all just kind of working shitty jobs and and just you know the thing that we wanted to do was was play music in my friend's apartment and he didn't even live on the bottom floor so i felt bad for it the people it was that a third, below him. third floor walk up every time we had practice yeah oh was, my god <laughs> fucking nightmare yeah yeah it was like uh it felt like alice in wonderland the stairs were because the it was in clinton hill and so like okay. a lot of the buildings on myrtle there are like old and like so the stairs were just like Everything just felt so slanted and crazy, like everything was gonna fall down. Do you remember when there was that earthquake? <laughs> that, that there was that earthquake in like 2012 that you could like I, feel the ripple in Brooklyn. Do you? I, I I I think that I know what you're talking about because there were buildings that were old in in the city that like like I, I like they kind of changed shape and they were like slanted and shit. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So like right. with, with that building that we used to practice in, like our our accordion keyboard player. It was his apartment and he was like in the shower when that earthquake happened and he like just like ran out in his towel because he said like the, the whole shit. building was like gonna fall yeah. down but yeah it was <laughs> it's just like a cool it was a cool time like it was like easy not easy but like you could work like a you could work part-time and sort of make ends meet like you know and still have a lot of time for music which is like a lot harder to do in new york now i feel like but um we we're just yeah. starting to tour like nationally so like we were just really I mean, we'd all toured in other capacities before it, but like as this band, we were just like, just seeing the country, like, and and just being, you know, early twenties, and I don't know, it was just like a really beautiful time in our lives. Yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool thing to. to I, lo I actually love when people do that. Like after this, I'm probably gonna watch uh, Jimmy Eat World Clarity, which is a live stream that. Oh um, yeah, I heard they were doing for, that. But like. Yeah, yeah, but it but it takes a it takes a moment, you know, for the band and for like people that uh, were into the record, and it kind of just brings them back to. So I talked about that earlier. Like your music has a quality to it. Like it makes so much sense to me that you would do a Neil Young's covered a Neil Young covers record with Jeff because uh, something about Neil Young and and your music, while it may not necessarily sound like each other, I think it shares a quality of like nostalgia that like. Mm -hmm. Same with like something like Red House Panthers or something. Like you mm -hmm. put that on, and like for some reason, it just like there's something nostalgic oh, yeah. that it that it makes you think about. Yeah. Um, so I love that. That's cool. Um, awesome. Well, I I just uh, I'll, I'll one more time let everyone know like uh, if you just tuned in, by the way, um, this entire interview is going to be up on the Saint Vitus channel from the from the start. I have the YouTube channel. All you have to do is look up my name, Chris Enriquez, and all of these interviews are up on there. Um, if you want to share them, show them to your family. 
I'm sure you guys <laughs> have, maybe your family wants to watch this. Um, <laughs> you, could, you could show this to uh, your child in, in a few years when this makes sense. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so everybody go to um, the link in your bio for tickets and info on how to watch uh, the show tomorrow night. And uh, yeah, guys, anything that I missed that you want to let every, oh, and, and, and everyone check out Big Freeze. I know it's your latest record, but and it's been out for a bit, but you know, obviously we should pump that up too. But uh, anything you guys want to mention before we uh, wrap it up and say goodnight? Um, I don't know. Listen uh, to Big Freeze. <laughs> it was really nice check seeing you, Chris. Stream. Yeah, yeah, really good to see you. <laughs> We'll do it in real life at some point. Yeah, I, yeah. I, so. yeah, yeah. I, I, I put on my host personality. I was telling Mike on the phone before because it's like I, 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 I get caught up catching up, but then I'm like, there are people watching. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's, it's like, like catching, I mean, yeah. I, mean, yeah, I, mean, I had like to that. make sure my boob was off screen. So like, we're all just kind of falling. Totally was. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was great seeing you guys too. And I yeah. again, I can't, I can't believe I haven't seen you. Like I was thinking about, it, I'm like, I haven't seen her since like fucking like like the Charleston or something. That's right. like, insane. Yeah, I, I have a really good memory. Um, I, I just like remembered that. I'm like, I don't think I've seen you since then. Wow. Um, yeah, it's wild. So hopefully next time I see you, it'll be uh, you guys on a stage. Yeah. Um, so I can Maybe enjoy that. Maybe there'll be free yeah. pizza wherever we are. <laughs> uh, yes, 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 yes. Do they still do that so. at the Charleston? The Charleston, um, I, you know, it's funny. I thought you were making a joke about me pretending to be a pizza delivery guy at St. Vitus uh, oh. when, 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 when Nirvana played, but I, oh. I, I don't know if you know that story. Um, <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, because that's a thing. And yeah, but um, I don't know. I, I, it's still there. I think they do give out free pizza, but I think the clientele is a lot different than sure. the, the uh, than, than, than our, our crowd from yeah. back then. <laughs> it's like so fucked up to think oh i'm sorry it's so messed up to think about i used to hang out there when i was 21 and i'm 40 now <laughs> it's really messed up um yeah yeah um yeah let's 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 catch up for real soon and hopefully um uh you know we'll we'll see you playing shows and and we'll all be playing shows again in some capacity um and and, and get back to what we love doing so yeah man yeah Amazing. Well, you, 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 you bring that little one to bed. I think it's probably past the bedtime and, uh, and, and we'll talk soon. All right, Chris. Okay. Great seeing you. Take care, everybody. See you, man. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Okay. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. That was awesome. Uh, appreciate you guys uh, supporting Age of Quarantine. Stay safe out there. Be good to each other. And um, we'll be back with uh, uh, the show on Monday. So stay tuned for the announcements on next week's guests. Have a great night.